Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 115. It's on standing waves. Standing waves are like they sound. They're waves that appear to stand still. And so an example of a sound standing wave is the waves found inside of Vuvuzela. And so you blow on it, you get that sound. You blow it with a higher frequency, and then you could even try to pierce your lips a little bit more and get an even higher frequency. But what's happening is you have these specific standing waves that sit within the chamber, the chamber of the Vuvuzela. Now, a wine glass works the same way. If you rub your finger with a little bit of water around the surface of it, what you can do is generate these standing waves inside the wine glass. What you're doing is vibrating the sides, and as you do that, you're vibrating the air, and since you have a standing wave inside there, it makes this pitch. Add water to it, and you're gonna have a slightly different pitch. And so waves can either be traveling or standing waves. Traveling waves will move from one place to another, and standing waves will appear to stand still. Now when you look at it, it's kind of an illusion. They're standing still, but the traveling waves are bouncing back and forth. In other words, they're being reflected off the boundaries, and then there's interference to create these standing waves. And so if we look at this uh, animation, the dark wave is going to be the standing wave, but in the background you can see the blue and the red waves that are bouncing back and forth and back and forth, and it's the summation of them that creates the standing wave. Now if you notice, that standing wave is going to have areas where it's not moving at all, and that's due to destructive interference, where the waves are canceling each other out, and we call those in physics nodes, areas where it's not moving, and then we're going to have total constructive interference in certain areas, and we call those anti-nodes. That's where it's moving the, the maximum amount back and forth and back and forth. And so an example of this could be found in instruments, for example. So a string instrument is going to be fixed at either end, and this animation is a good example of that. It's fixed on either end, and as the, as the waves bounce back and forth and back and forth, you create these standing waves. If we shorten that, like on a guitar, then we can get different pitches. A tube is going to be the same way. A tube could be open on both ends like a flute, or it could be closed on one end like a vuvuzela, and that's going to create these standing waves as well. So let's start with traveling versus standing waves. And so this PHET simulation, I'm generating some waves. Those waves, and this is just kind of theoretical, are moving out the door and then they've moved on forever. But if we add a boundary on the other side, in other words, if we add a fixed boundary, you can see now there's a reflection back. So those waves didn't just keep going, they'll bounce back, and now they're going to bounce back again. And as that wave goes back and forth and back and forth, you can see that we're starting to generate these standing waves. And you can even see those nodes and those anti-nodes. In other words, those areas where it's not moving and those areas where it's moving quite a bit. So this is an animation of standing waves. And so what we're doing is as the, the blue wave moves to the right, becomes the red wave, which moves back to the left, and it just keeps going and going and going. We're getting destructive interference. That's causing these nodes where they cancel each other out. And then we have constructive interference, and that's creating these anti-nodes, where those two waves add together to make a much bigger wave. Now, an example of this, if you've ever played baseball before, when you hit the ball, sometimes you'll hit it, and the bat will kind of buzz in your hands. In other words, it vibrates quite a bit. And the reason why is that you're hitting the ball on an anti-node, an area where the waves going up and down the bat are actually constructively interfering to create a huge vibration there. And we refer to it as the sweet spot, the spot on a bat where the where the node is, where you don't have much vibration, that you hit the ball and you don't feel really any vibration at all. And so let's go through experimentation. So this is a sim bucket simulation. What we're doing is looking at standing waves. The first one we're going to look at is when you have two fixed ends. So an example of this could be a guitar. And so what you do is you have a string, you hold it on one side, and then you pluck it and you're going to have vibration. So what do you get? Waves going back and forth and back and forth. What's the standing wave then? The standing wave is going to be that green wave in this, in this simulation. It's that wave that is the addition of the other waves. What's interesting in a guitar is that you don't only have one, what we call harmonic, or one standing wave, but you can have multiple standing waves. Now in all these standing waves, what makes them the same is that we have a node on either side. In other words, there's no net movement on either side of that string. If we look at a, an instrument like a tuba or a vuvuzela, 
what is the characteristic of that? Well, we're vibrating it, but you can see that on the left side we have a node. It's not vibrating, but we have an anti-node at the right side. So in each of these harmonics, the left side's going to be a node. It's not going to move at all, but the right side is going to be an anti-node. And so we still have those traveling waves going back and forth and back and forth. It's just that one of those ends is free to create an anti-node, and then we just have reflection off of that end. These are all the different harmonics. What keeps them all in common is the node on the left, anti-node on the right. If we then look at something that has two open ends, like a flute, a flute you don't blow in one end, you're blowing on the top to create the vibration, or a pan flute would be an example of that. And so what's going to create the standing wave here? Well, in this first harmonic, we have the node in the middle, and then we have anti-nodes on either side. Now we have two nodes near the middle, anti-nodes on the side. So what's the characteristic of a uh, standing wave in a, in a chamber that has two open ends? It's always going to be an anti-node on either side. But depending on the frequency, we can get different pitches as we blow through. Rubens tube is a really cool example of that. In a Rubens tube, what you do is you fill up a chamber with gas, a gas that's flammable. And so this guy's lighting the chamber. So we were having flames coming out of the top. But on a Rubens tube, you put a speaker on the side. And what that speaker does is create these longitudinal waves. Those longitudinal waves, as they move through, will create areas where there's a lot of compression. And an area where there's a lot of compression or anti-nodes, then the gas really can't make its way out. And so it'll be really low there. But at the nodes, it'll actually come out quite a bit. And so did you learn to predict the properties of, of standing waves. They result from reflection of these traveling waves. Could you collect data? Again, I use a sim bucket simulation to do that. And then finally, could you describe examples of when this occurs, standing waves? Musical instruments are good. Baseball bats are great. And I hope that was helpful.